uh, not as offensive name. <laughs> the squaw is definitely one, a pejorative. I've heard it used that way even in my life and I don't know very many First Nations people. So, um, so I'm, I would support it if they feel like it's offensive to them because, you know, just because it was named something in the past, I don't feel like we have to continue with that. Just to add my two cents. Morning, Jared. And Jared has a halo. Morning. This morning. A halo. I do? Well, morning, that's Jared. normal. <laughs> Here up there. How's that? I'll go to the dark side. Is that better? <laughs> there. No, you can put it on. Uh, Sam, yes, please record this. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, just glancing through here. Okay, so then, then, then there's the continued public hearing. We said that uh, the first time that we met in person, we were going to have the Metro's public hearing. So that's the rezoning. Uh, we did send out the uh, 500 foot notices that's required by state law on July 7th. So all the neighbors uh, around that property have gotten those notices um, pertaining to the rezoning of Bristol Road, just so you're aware of that. Uh, so we'll be able to have that public hearing. Um, and then uh, da, 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 the next one, oh, any questions on that one before we, I don't know if I can answer a lot of questions on that one. I mean, we've talked about that for a while now, but. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the next public hearing is overriding the tax levy limit. There's a resolution uh, associated with uh, adopting local law to override the tax limit. I don't know if you guys saw an email. I sent an email out late yesterday, or no, maybe I didn't. I put it in my report, I'm sorry. Um, the comptroller announced this year that on top of everything else, that the tax levy limit for overriding the tax cap is actually not 2% this year, it's 1.56%. Oh, so boy. They use the calculations and everything. So it was already gonna be hard to meet the 2%. I would say it's nearly impossible now to meet the 1.56%. Well, with the, with the water project, we had no, yeah. no chance of ever it's meeting it's it this be time. It's impossible to, to do that anyway, so it's, yeah. But if so, there was ever a uh, project that we can feel like we voted the right way when we voted to stick our necks out a bit without knowing about the grant in going forward with the water project, this summer's drought conditions have certainly made it obvious that it was so necessary. Definitely. Definitely. Right. Yeah, for sure. Kate, I, do, do you hear back from Jim? Is he joining us? I don't know if he's joining us or not. Um, you didn't hurt. I, he might be tied up this morning. I'm getting text messages from him. He's working on water. Um, I'm also getting a message from him. There was a, we had a planning public works meeting last week. So maybe it was the week before. I don't know if they're running together. Um, and um, we've currently with that project scheduled to install three water pumps for that transmission main. And Jim brought up the idea of adding a fourth. Um, we kind of had a conversation and, and there wasn't a huge benefit to putting the fourth in versus the cost. But now Jim is asking again, saying, wait a minute, I think we really need to have another conversation about adding a fourth pump as part of this project. So uh, well, I think we'd have to understand, like, what is the benefit of the fourth? If it's about maintenance, um, like that they can take one one offline easier or something, then maybe. But if it well, doesn't give us capacity that we need. And that's exactly the conversation that we had. And Jim and Greg Hoteling can have that conversation with us, whether it's at yeah. a board meeting or, or whenever. But it's my understanding we currently operate two pumps. Adding the third pump is in case one has to come offline and there was limited benefit to adding the fourth pump. That was the general conversation that we were that we had last week at the Planning Public Works meeting. Um, I know Jim is very, very concerned and he's really been stressed out about this uh, whole situation with the water because our two pumps that we have now. Oh, right. Running if one goes. And one of them went down and we had to do an emergency repair on it real quick in the middle of the night. And we're really, you know, our water levels are um, dangerous, dangerously low. Uh, they really are. We should be about 31 feet of water in the tank and we're about 18, give or take. And we're not able to recoup in the middle of the night. And I know Jim sent out another message again this morning that yesterday was the single largest day ever pumping water. We pumped 1.6 million gallons and uh, we're just not able to keep up. So we've got to, uh, that's why we sent out the additional advisory yesterday. And we've started talking to our top 10 water users. Um, the Wegmans farm down at the Miller Nursery they're using almost a million gallons themselves, it sounds like. I mean, we've, we've got to ask them to slow down the water consumption right now until we can get these water tanks. And then we'll sell them all the water they want all day long. 
And I said to Jim, maybe we need to talk about the water rate too, you know, but anyway, um, there's, it's, it really is concerning. He is very, very stressed out right now about the speaking, amount that we're pumping. Speaking to that, I've had people rent, ask me about the car washes, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, we just had the nice opening for the one. Would that be, they've asked me, we're reducing, but those guys are running, still running. So is they, that something? They are. Those, both of those car washes actually um, on 332 are part of the Canandaigua Farmington Water. Oh, that's not, right. They're not, yeah, those two aren't ours. Okay. Yep. So Correct. We're good. I stand corrected. We're good on those. And then the other thing, Jared, interestingly enough, and I didn't know about this until I met with uh, Anthony Daniele and um, um, Mr. Uh, can't think of his name off the top of my head. It begins with a G, but anyway, uh, or M, I'm sorry, Martian. Martian is from the auto wash. Both of those car washes actually only have a two inch water service. They have very limited water actually going in. Okay. Um, for like all the undercoating stuff, that's all reused water that they capture and then reuse. Because I know they're very, they're from what they're saying when we were talking to them, it's really efficient versus what you could do. So right. yeah. Okay. Well, don't yeah, think I never even. So those aren't ours. So that's supposed, and that's supposedly the most efficient way to get your car clean, rather than washing it yourself in your driveway, because you use actually more water than they yeah, do. Yeah, you use from what they're saying, you use about seventy percent less. Yeah, you well, know, well, thirty gallons versus a hundred gallons. But you know, don't there they, are people who wash their car every day. <laughs> right. Don't, don't they recycle <laughs> some of it too? Yeah, yeah they, they do recycle some. Yes, they do. As long as they stock that pond, that pond with fish, I'm, I'm okay. I want some nice bass in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Get, getting right. back to the pumps there that you were talking about, Doug, I remember attending a planning board, the highway planning board uh, meeting uh, several months ago. And at that time, the third pump was the auxiliary pump. We never discussed at that meeting anyways, anything about a fourth pump. Right. Because there were on two pumps and then the third was going to be the auxiliary now we're talking about a fourth and you're looking at what, a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that? Well, and that's exactly it, Gary. And that's the that's where you know the board's ultimately gonna have to make a decision, but we've got to bring some data to you to make a decision. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Is the additional expense worth it in terms of what does it bring us? We don't understand that yet. And the other thing is that the pumps, the one thing I would say, and I know this is where Jim's coming from, and he's just very concerned right now with the situation, but those pumps have to be set by a crane. And then there's the additional expense of that and everything. So I know his question is, hey, while the roof is off the building, as the building's being constructed, is it worth it to go ahead and set a fourth pump in there? Um, if it's needed down the road. But again, we have to understand, we have to get more data for you guys to make a decision on that. That's yeah. gotta get that well, data. I would hope that the roof is gonna be put on so that that can be taken off at any given time, not just for you know another pump or something like that. Down the road, if you need to put another pump in, I it, would hope that the roof was being built so that you could remove it uh, easily. It, it is set up that way. However, obviously it's more work while it's open. It would be easier if we do need to set something in there versus. Yeah, know. and we wouldn't have to pay yeah. the duplicate expenses for another whatever. Uh, yeah, I understand that part of it. Yeah. But you couldn't have hit it at a worse time with the pandemic and everything and the tax uh, isn't all. So that, that's my concern about a, a fourth pump. Right. So. Yeah, I definitely I echo yours, Gary, but I just want to hear what are they... Why did they think it's a good idea? Because there's something we're missing because none of us is going, yeah, let's do that. So there's something that we don't know that they they do. And I just want to hear what they have to say. So no, it's understandable. So we can we can talk about that um, at the meeting with some more data and everything. So, um, OK, so jumping to these resolutions here, the first one is the actual rezoning of that Bristol Road property. Um, there's a lot of attachments associated with this particular uh, local law. This would be and a this, when you say the metros one. For this is the one with the uh, street with houses on one side that's tucked between the hammocks. Is that the one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I was thinking of the right one. There's a lot of neighborhood angst about this one. Yeah, the comments, and I know Jared, you've talked with some. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Does that show yep. up on my on my screen? The actual. Yep. Well, okay. Yep. Yes. Um, I know Jared, you've had some comments and stuff too. The the comment that I've heard the most is concerns about stormwater, 
um, which obviously that will have to be addressed by the planning board. And that's actually a New York state law, a DEC law that they actually have to contain all their stormwater on their own property. Uh, so that's actually done through the planning. And then the other comment that I've heard is uh, relative to the request for sidewalks, uh, maybe that the development do something with sidewalks, but I don't know if you guys have had other requests comments, but those are the two biggest ones that I've heard. So. Is there a sidewalk across the front of it? Is that what that little uh, picture is through? Yes. Um, looks like it. Right, on, right. on Bristol Road. There's an existing sidewalk in front of the hammocks, which is the apartment project, just right here. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that or not. Or do I and this to... ties into it. Um, let's see. Sorry, sorry. And people are the the request is for a sidewalk within the little street. Is that what they're asking about, Doug? Um, they would like to see the sidewalk extended further up uh, Bristol. Now there there um, there is no sidewalk currently. I don't believe. And what's on the other side? So yep. there's a sidewalk here going back to the yeah side. the hammocks. What's on the you other got, side? There got the church to... up there a little bit. Yeah. So in this picture, the sidewalk would just end at the uh, edge of their property and people are saying, hey, give right. a sidewalk on the road. Right. I don't really see how we can make the developer do that. Yeah, I, I don't either. And then the other thing that we'll have to um, figure out if we do go down that road is then we've got to, you know, get easements and everything else that from all those property owners. And I know that at least in one particular case, one person told me they weren't interested now we do have sidewalks currently on Paris Street extension um, all the way up, but I don't think we have anything on Bristol Road. So. Now the sewers for that project, that goes into the uh, Bristol Street uh, line and uh, Doug? The sewer, they are able to, I was gonna try to pull over here real quick. The sewer, um, you know, when they do their engineering work and everything, they'll tie that in, but that'll actually go back in through the, uh, like the hammocks, I believe. Well, the only reason I bring that up is when I was on the zoning board there uh, for, before the hammocks went in, that was a big concern if the capacity for that line on Bristol Street was large enough to accommodate the Hampton in that, uh, project. And I guess it was, so I was just uh, curious about that project, even though it's a small one. Yeah, they, uh... Let's see, I don't, can you guys, uh, do, do, do. can you guys see my Encore that I have pulled up or no? Yeah, the, well, not, we see no. a picture, the green picture. We see the, um, the site, thumbnails. We see from, the site, the plan, not the Encore. Yeah, we've got your agenda pictures. <clears throat> Where's my, oh, share screen, new share, there we go. Okay. All right, now we got it. All yeah. right, so here's the hammocks right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Yes, we can. Yeah. So here's the hammocks right here. And then this property that we're talking about is actually this lot here and this lot here. Um, so this is that, that whole piece. That's where they're proposed, the William Metros. Uh, and then here's the church up here. That okay. Comes out. Now. Whose uh, property is right next door there? This property, the, yeah. the Dr. Thomas. Are you yeah. talking on the yes. yeah on the Beth east Thomas. side? Uh, yeah, on the on the west side. And have they been at the meetings? Uh, <clears throat> they have participated, I believe, during the Zoom meeting in May. I want to say. Okay. Um, she did not was not able. I believe she was not able to participate at the original meeting in either March or April, whichever it was. Sure. Um, and. I've talked to her a couple of times. Um, I know she had a lot of concerns about stormwater. Uh, that was the one thing that I heard from her. I think she had some other concerns too, but stormwater, she kept saying to me over and over again, mm -hmm. but she's saying that her basement floods and she was oh. concerned for more development that the water would come back um, that way. So, um, Gary, I know the sewer line, I, I actually, I don't know. It's the other one that I'm thinking of. The other sewer line is over here for Quail Summit, comes in the back of it. But um, 
the hammocks does have plenty of sewer and it ties into that line and everything, whichever way it goes and, and they'll have, they'll be required to do that, so. Thanks for showing us this map. This was helpful for me. Yeah, no problem. Okay. go back to the agenda, hopefully. Agenda. All right, can you see the agenda down here? What do you guys have, the agenda or Encore? We have the agenda. The agenda. All right, perfect. Okay, uh, so then getting into new resolutions, the monthly financial reports. Um, when you guys go through the monthly financial reports, you will see there is one or two lines that we saw that are over. We, you've already authorized the transfer. We're taking care of that. It's just timing by the time we ran the report and getting that done, uh, but those are taken care of. Um, otherwise, we're actually in pretty good shape with most of that stuff. Uh, the local law to override the tax cap. This is nothing new for you guys. Uh, we've done this before, um, as we just talked about in it preserves the options for us to override the tax cap, but all of our special districts are included in the tax cap. That's the part that a lot of times our friends in the state don't necessarily talk about. While the general fund and highway fund will probably be able to be tax cap compliant with those, the special districts is gonna be nearly impossible with the water project this year, so. Yeah. Um, and I really think if you, we were to just look at the general fund and the highway fund, I think, you know, we're starting to work on the budget now and we'll see how that all plays out, but I think we'll be fine with keeping the tax rate relatively flat, which would mean that we'd be tax cap compliant, but again, it's the special districts, so. Um, all right, some budget transfers. Um, those are just our normal budget transfers that we're doing. And then the bigger resolution I wanna spend a second on here is um, 150. Um, these relate, or no, I'm sorry, it's the next one. This is. Uh, the resolution number 150, remember at that meeting, that last meeting that we had in person, we real quick moved $500,000 over to those two accounts. That 500000 banking was slowed and, down. And so we're moving that back. Yeah. Uh, just uh, because that money's still sitting there. All right. Okay. This next resolution, 151, this is the one I want to spend a second on here because there's a lot happening in this resolution. Um, so we reduced... The second paragraph, the second whereas, we reduced at that early meeting, we um, reduced the general fund and the highway fund down to three, two, and then two, nine. Um, the, actually, that number wasn't quite right when we did that. It should have been three, nine, two, four, two, twenty, because there was an additional $500 that we had put in for sales tax revenue. Anyway, so per that resolution. Um, then subsequently, this next whereas, uh, we transferred, oh, I'm sorry, we, as part of that same resolution, we identified that we were bringing $75,000 in from the tax reserve fund and $35,000 in from the bonded indebtedness reserve fund. Um, and then subsequently, by another resolution, 131, we added 7785 in additional revenue for the sale of the roll-off containers, and we were buying the, the new roll-off container. So there's a series of things happening here, and that brings the total budget general fund to 3.3 million, all right? We have now gotten our pilot money in, so it's a little bit more than what we expected. We've got, we've generated a little bit additional revenue from uh, the clerk fees, uh, 500 of, sir, and mortgage tax was actually quite a bit more than what we had budgeted, but uh, it was actually more last year than what we had budgeted and we never went back and adjusted the budget. So we budgeted the wrong amount. We budgeted less than what we should have because we never went back and adjusted it. So this corrects that so that that's fixed for going forward also. Um, so good news, revenues are up a little bit. Plus I think we're actually in relatively good shape sales tax wise right now too. Uh, we should have some sales tax numbers next week for the second quarter, but we really, I mean, who knows? Who knows if we're, I mean, like everything else, right? Who knows if we're gonna hit a second wave of this or whatever the case, let's see what happens. So we're still budgeting very conservatively on the on the uh, revenue side of things. So revenue, 3.3 million for the general fund. There's a series of adjustments we need to do to clean up some stuff on the expense side. 
Um, our auditors numbers, uh, we have needed to, to use our auditors a couple of extra times with some of the transition stuff earlier this year. We had to bring them in for some additional help. We just need to add a little bit of additional money just to cover all the costs so that we don't run into a problem with that. That's that first line. Um, we had reduced the, the next line here, we had reduced the deputy town clerk. This is um, Rebecca Doyle. She's one of the ones that we furloughed for a couple of months. We've brought her back now. Jean needs the help uh, with Jean not being able to be in the office uh, all of the time because of uh, her personal situation with her mom. Um, so Jean had asked for to bring Rebecca back. Uh, we have the money to bring her back now. And what I've said to Jean is we can go and bring her back now, but then we need to furlough her again at the end of the year because we're gonna run out of money. Went through and calculated it out. It's actually only about $3,000, $4,000 to just leave her for the rest of the year. Um, and so this would adjust that to allow her to just stay for the rest of the year. All of our other three people are still furloughed. The other three, um, which um, I need to request an executive session and talk about that. I, I don't want to get into the specifics with this, just not that anybody here, but this meeting is being recorded and their personnel matters, so I don't want to get into too many details. Um, okay, we'll plan for executive session then, right? Yep, yep to talk about that. Um, the next line, uh, buildings, highway, um, we had a problem with the HVAC system um, two weeks ago, I think it was, and it's about $3,000 to fix that in the, uh, in the building. Need to bump that line up a little bit. Contingency, you see I'm actually increasing that by about $15,000 to balance the budget, which that's great, putting 15000 yeah, that is good. Some money that. back into contingency. Mm -hmm. um, waste and recycling, the 816200 that $6,000 is for the new roll-off container we sold. We increased that revenue line by seventy seven eighty five. This increases the expense line so that we can go ahead and buy that roll-off container. Um, waste and recycling contractual, we're increasing that. Uh, we actually had a compactor go down uh, two weeks ago. I want to say the bill is a couple grand for that, but based on the early amount of volume that we were bringing in, I also know that we're going to need a little extra money uh, right. for our waste disposal costs. So that's there. Um, this next line, I wanted to have a conversation with you guys about. I've had a conversation with the Sheriff's Department about. We had, with the COVID adjustments, we had reduced our police contractual line from 27,000 down to 7,500. This restores some of this uh, for basically the month of August, September, October, November, December, going ahead and allowing them to uh, start up our road patrol again. Um, it's my understanding that all the other municipalities in Ontario County have restarted their road patrol, except for us and one other. Um, no, I think it's important. I see the people speeding yeah. where people are walking and it's, you know, we really need to help with the compliance. Yeah, we need, we need them out there. Okay. And then these next two lines, um, we had, when we did the, these are uh, the zoning office specialist. This is uh, uh, Michelle and code enforcement. Uh, specifically, this line is, um, Kate, I don't think that line is right. That that account number should be a 100. It's a personnel line and not a 400 line. So we've got to adjust that. We'll get that correct number for you for the meeting. I just noticed that this should be like a one something or other, a dot 100 something or other. 24, I think. What is it, 124? 124 is the one. Yeah, we'll have to fix that. But anyway, what happened was we had talked about furloughing two additional people in the development office that we ended up not doing, but when we adopted the budget, when we did that, we adopted the account lines, the amounts, as if we were going to furlough them. So I need to restore that money to do the thing for the rest of the year. So that's what those two lines are. Uh, but we are gonna have to make a, uh, gonna have to ask you for an amendment to that. This last line here, 8664 should be dot one something or other. So, um, and then the rest of this resolution, the other two things that this does is the contingency and tax stabilization fund currently has $548,000 in it. We've talked about this before. This is so limited on what we can use that money for. This does take $75,000 out of it. Um, 
with specifically the the understanding that we're using it to offset the need for additional tax money, a loss of sales tax, for instance, that we're experiencing this year, the contingency and tax stabilization reserve can be used, for instance, in this particular case for a loss of sales tax dollars. Um, taking 75,000 out of that, uh, drawing that down as we had originally said, um, it's still gonna leave obviously 470 some thousand dollars in it and uh, we can look and see if we want to that again or not or, or just leave it there um, and then the other one is the bonded indebtedness reserve that we had established um, uh, that we had established I believe it was two years ago and uh, so this takes 35,000 out of that and so both of these are subject to permissive referendum and so this would allow us to go ahead and issue those notices uh, subject to permissive referendum. And then once the uh, period ends for the um, permissive referendum, then we can go ahead and do the budget transfers. So, so the budget transfer for the $35,000 would pay the debt down? Is that what it would be used for? Yeah, so it would be the debt payment that we're gonna have in total for the highway building is- uh, Okay, so it's the annual debt payment will be uh, so it would be applied towards it would be applied to that and right. the 75 would just be put into our general budget and we would then up the revenue and or you know not up but up it, and then change some additional expenses well no the 75,000 we already have budgeted in with that total of uh, three point above okay. yeah <clears throat> that 75,000 when we did the COVID adjustment back in April I think it was it included the 75 and the 35 also already in there so why do we have to do permissive referendum now? Or did we just forget to do it earlier? No, because we actually haven't, you haven't passed anything. We passed that budget, but we never in the budget resolution, we never said that we were doing the transfer subject to permissive referendum. So oh, okay. That's so this is, all right. Um, now, truthfully, the 75 and the 35, you see I up the contingency. You know, right. can we get by without it? Yes. We absolutely could. But on the other hand, you've got over half a million dollars sitting in that contingency tax reserve fund that can only be used for very limited purposes. Exactly. It's an opportunity to kind of take some money out of that. And the bonded indebtedness, what we've been doing is at the end of the year, we've been looking at, okay, how much money do we have left over and what can we put into some of these reserve funds? You know, yes, we could get by without the 35,000, but the 35,000 comes in, hopefully just like in previous years, we've done a great job in budgeting and we have some extra money. We can go back and put some money back into whether it's the bonded indebtedness or one of the other reserves, so. Yeah, I, I think when I first started with the town, I was shocked how many different reserves we had. We had so many and it, it felt like they were tied up and we were unable to use them. And so we've managed to uh, change that a little bit, but then I also realized that the controller doesn't like us to have too much money in accounts and reserves are one way for us to have some money stashed away for a rainy day. It's just, if they're tied down too tightly, it doesn't really benefit the town. Correct, exactly, exactly. So. Okay, any other questions on that resolution? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, okay, so this resolution, and actually I know we need to ask you for an amendment to this, and Kate, I don't know if you have the actual number or not, just so we can share it with them, but um, so Kate, actually, why don't you explain this resolution, and then I can... Okay, yeah, can everybody hear me okay? I was a little quiet earlier. Yes. You're a little quiet, but we can mm -hmm. hear you. Okay, yep. so um, part of one of the projects I've been working on is cleaning up our capital project fund uh, that was not necessarily always given uh, enough attention. So I've gone back over the last two years and I've been looking at specifically at um, the water district extension, this one, and um, the wool house extension. And um, one of the things that I found is that at the end of 2018, um, County Road 32 extension 41 had been given $158,400 based on a budget from MRB for installation. And in 2019, we created SW555 and moved forward. But what didn't happen is the closeout of the capital project. And when I went back and I dug into that capital project, I found that they actually had $67,000 left over because we saved cost in the installation and we didn't use that full 158. 
So when I brought that to Doug's attention, his suggestion was that we apply that to the balance of the loan. Um, so that's exactly what this resolution is asking you to do. And this would technically be as of 12-31-19, which uh, in speaking with the auditors is the appropriate way to do this. Um, and what it would do is we would take that cash balance, apply it to the loan. And the only thing that's different here in this resolution, Doug mentioned we needed an adjustment is right there where his, his cursor is. So um, the, the amount due to SW500 as of January 1st, 2020, it, the $80,764.74 is the full balance of the loan. Um, in 2019, the payment that was made was 10,536. However, a portion of that was principal and then the other portion of that was the 3% interest. So we can't reduce the principal balance by the full payment. We need to reduce the principal balance only by the payment that went towards principal. So the, um, the 80,764 would be the full loan balance without the interest added in for the remaining years. And the, um, the principal balance would be 83,000 um, based on the payment that was made in 2019. So again, so my question is, this water district has been paying us interest on the full amount only for a while. Only, only, one. Oh, only one, because it, yeah. it, okay. Because I was worried that they had been paying 3% on 158 for a long time. And it felt like, wow, it was our fault. Why are they being penalized with that interest? Yeah. Uh, no, this was the project installation finished in 2018. <coughs> and 2019 was the very first year that they had a, pay, a debt service payment. So, okay. um, so they'll actually, by finding this cash and reducing the principal balance, the district will end up as you see here, reduce, reducing their payback back term um, yep. from 20 years to half of that. Yep. And doing so also reduce that additional interest. So the total amount that they pay with interest will reduce quite significantly. And uh, there's no consideration of giving them that their extra interest back that they, you know what I mean? Crediting them for the interest that they shouldn't have needed to pay last year. For the January, well, it was three thousand dollars in interest for that uh, specifically. Um, I think is about what it is. It worked out to be probably like forty five hundred because it's one hundred fifty at three percent, right? So. Right. I mean, so that's the that's the challenge, right? So if we had done a municipal bond for the twenty years, for they the would be paying it, right? They, they would be paying it for the twenty years, and they'd be paying the interest, and the additional sixty seven thousand dollars would have just gone to fund balance and we would have spread that out over the next umpteen number of years and reducing the amount that we would levy them. Um, we do have a little bit more flexibility in this particular case because we book these as loans from Canada with consolidated as due to due from. Um, so yeah, we, we have a little bit of flexibility in terms of uh, what we can, what we can do. But on the other hand, it, it was the one year. I mean, and at least with this, I mean. Well, I'm happy that it was reason. only one year. I yeah. just still, it's the principal. And that's why I'm asking the question if we yeah. had considered it. Yeah. And we have, we, we already have an amortization schedule that we're going to work on revising to get that interest reduced because um, it was set up based on the full amount and we're going to adjust that. Yeah. Um, right. Forward right. To yeah, you can that. definitely just change the amounts. Yep. All right. Well, good find. Thanks, Kate, for digging in. Yeah. Kate's got uh, one other capital project that she's uh, working on there, too, just speaking of these capital projects. We've got one where we actually had a capital project set up for the Woolhouse Road Water District. Um, and actually, and Kate, you and I need to talk about that a little bit more. Um, basically, what I'm being told now by our engineer is that they don't think it can go forward. And so we're probably going to have to close out that capital project and get that all cleaned up and everything too. Um, are there people who are going to be disappointed? Uh, I think uh, most notably, probably one of the folks, uh, Sam Casella, I know he's talked about it many times. And so we're going to have to have additional conversation, but the, the debt service exceeds the uh, threshold uh, for that district without a contribution from Canada Consolidated. And additionally, 
we're not able to do that until this other water project is done. And so then we've got to relook at everything and then oh, okay. some other water tank. So yeah. Um okay. I'll jump forward here, resolution one fifty three, uh authorization to proceed with mixed use zoning referral to the planning board for this is uh the brickyard road attachment number seven. Give me one quick second. Let me flip over to attachment number seven. Um, this is for the project we had. Um, we, yeah, the folks were just with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this may be the only site plan I had to show you. Can you see the site plan okay here? So, yes. Airport Road, mm -hmm. Forest Drive. Uh, this is that gas main here. Um, <clears throat> so, this is the proposed development. So, this would actually not be rezoning the property. I just want to be clear about this. What, what this. Um, action would do, this resolution would do is say to the developer, okay, Mr. Developer, generally we believe that your concept is in keeping with the mixed use overlay for and the town's vision for the future of this, go work with the planning board and get approval. Um, and then they have to go through all of the engineering, they have to submit instead of submitting concept plans, which is what this is, then they have to submit official site plans and everything else. I know that the planning board wants to have a public hearing, public discussion, maybe even a share ed, I think they called it, uh, regarding this once they get more detail and some um, actual engineered plans and that sort of thing. You know, town board members could certainly attend that, but that's generally, that's the kind of detail that the planning board would get into when they're reviewing a project. Um, I know that we've had some conversations before about pedestrian access. We've had some conversations about the gas main and all that kind of stuff. So again, we could certainly provide comments to the planning board, but the planning board would get into all those details. Then what happens in this process, and I know this is not a normal process, but this is our mixtures overlay process. Once they get approval from the planning board, then it comes back to the town board for the last official approval in actually rezoning the property to mixed use overlay. So you still do get another look at it. So Doug, where were we? Remember these guys came and showed us this and then what happened at that meeting compared to what we're doing? For this? So the first step is to get an advisory opinion from the from planning, planning board. board. That was what we did last time. And so that's what that first resolution was. And so now you have that feedback from the planning board that the planning board says generally, yes, we believe the concept is in keeping, you know, but we would like to have additional information and we would like to have additional hearings and those sorts of things. And the planning board can do all that stuff. You guys don't. So have this that. is just approving the planning board to take the next step. The last right. time we approved them to look at it, now we're approving them to take the next step. Essentially, yes, because what happens is this is a concept plan and the developer doesn't want to spend really tens of thousands of dollars on oh, right. and everything else. If the town board doesn't feel that the overall development is within keeping for the zoning of the mixed use overlay. So this is your opportunity if you say, hey, this isn't in keeping, this is the opportunity to stop it before the developer spends all that money. Now, if you say yes, go ahead, planning board, ask for the actual site plans, ask for the engineering plans, get into all the level of detail on exactly what this is gonna look like, that's when the planning board will now be doing that with the developer and then they would give them a site plan approval. Okay, Doug, thank Doug you. Is, Doug, is that uh, this plan here, does that the uh, land that uh, is not able to attach to sewers? So the area here that is in, that says future flex development area, this area right here is the one that, um, that what they're telling us uh, is got some limitations on sewer. Um, the sewers across the street on the other side and what they're saying basically is that there's a elevation problem. It, you know, I think, you know, we've looked at that before with the county and obviously Gary, we looked at that with the sewer master plan and a variety of other things. The county just recently ran sewer on this side, the west side of Brickyard Road over here at the airport for the expansion right. they're doing at the airport. And there's actually a hole back a little bit farther here at airport road specifically so that uh, additional tie-ins could happen. So. I don't know if it's, I don't know what the real story is there. I kind of get the impression that maybe the county is concerned about uh, the tying in and the capacity, but um, that this is that whole area that we've been working on. So I think that there's still question about that. 
Well, when I saw the resolution, I was surprised because I was under the impression that the developer said he wasn't going to move on that at all. He was working on another project, which was on airline and summer. Airline and summer. Aero well, that's close. That's close to summers. Summers. This is. Gary didn't hear what you said. I, I said uh, is the other parcel of land that uh, Rocco bought, uh, you know, that was a, my understanding is he was going to start working on that project there, not uh, the one on Brickyard and Thomas. I could be wrong. So that that's correct, Gary. That's exactly what this is. So Brickyard is to the west in this future area. So that's the area that he's not working on right now. And the area that he is working on is the Summers Drive Airport Road. That's exactly what this is. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm saying is that uh, we go ahead and move it forward to the planning board. Uh, I can't imagine he's going to expend any money on it at the present time if he's working on the other project totally. Doug thinks this is the other project. This is the project, Gary. No, this is okay. Airport and Summers. Yeah, so Summers and Airport. So he would have an entrance on Airport is what the proposal is here. I don't know, I wanted to draw on this, but it's not letting me for some reason. Um, yeah, we see the entrance from Airport. Yeah, so yeah, Airport here summer, yeah. and then um, Summers is, is right here. So the airport and it would cross over to Thomas Road. Airport Road to Thomas Road. Thomas Road would be up here. Okay. It's, so, it's not very big. It's not very big on my uh, cell phone, so I. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get one of those giant cell phones. <laughs> so you know, I I, I do ahead. laugh at this because when they uh, when they built the new uh, facility, the school did. The main reason was to get it away from the space, but also get away from the houses on Pearl Street. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of chuckle because now the houses are following it. the houses are following the bus garage <laughs> they like we don't want to be working on equipment at six in the morning in a residential neighborhood right so yeah. now at the residential neighborhoods following the bus garage that is that is true that this parcel that i have highlighted i accidentally highlighted the wrong parcel here on encore so this is summer's drive here this is not the parcel that's actually a parcel that um go to the it's the one to the left this yeah, one if you, that, no, that it's horseshoes this, the airport the bus garage, garage. right so it would come in here and it would cross over to here. Uh, and then it also includes uh, this whole parcel as well as this parcel and this parcel. So this parcel here that's highlighted right now is the area uh, that he's showing as future development area along with the rest of this parcel. See, this is one big parcel. <clears throat> and so ah. what he's showing is this, this area here as future development. And then what he's proposing to right now is um, um, what he's proposing to do right now is do something like this, basically across these properties here, because it includes this one here. So, all right. Okay. I can see that much better. Good. <laughs> all right. Uh, jumping back over here to the agenda. So that's that uh, resolution. Um, all right, this next resolution 154. Um, this and you may have seen an email, I think I've attached it here that came from the county. Um, this would we've informally already done this just trying to help out but the governor issued an executive order that basically said we could extend building permits up to 120 days. <clears throat> Uh, prior to March 7th during the COVID situation. So this would officially go back and document this so that anybody that had a building permit that was going to expire, you know, in March or April, uh, for instance, we've been working with them already anyway, but this would officially document so that we weren't charging them for new building permits and everything else during this whole situation and, and helping to keep things moving. Um, any questions on that one? Nope. All right. Uh, the next one here, this is the Squaw Island. Um, this is a short resolution because all it does is it says basically that the town of board uh, supports the change of the name of Squaw Island. Obviously, I know you want to hear from uh, the parties on, uh, on Monday night and that um, we would work with the DEC essentially uh, and ultimately it's up to the DEC. So, 
Um, this next resolution, uh, 156, another housekeeping, it would authorize remote or virtual participation uh, meetings um, for the time being. We did a resolution early and we said, and it was just by motion, I'm sorry, we did a motion, we never did a resolution. Again, this is so we have something in writing, a document that basically, while the executive orders allow for remote and virtual meetings that we would allow those in our boards, our planning board committees, et cetera, um, to do that. I believe the planning board um, has actually been doing a hybrid meeting. Uh, I believe they just have hybrid meeting and they would like to continue doing that. Is that the plan for the town board? Are we going to switch to hybrid? I mean, we had the we had the one uh, public hearing that was hybrid, right. and I think we're going to have some people presenting. What what is our plan for this one? Just all Zoom or hybrid? Hybrid. 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 I think that's probably generally going forward. Let's leave it to the discretion of the individual members. Um, you know, because I think it sounds like to me the majority of the town board is willing. I mean, obviously, the majority of the town board was at that meeting that we had last Wednesday. Right. If you feel comfortable in that format where we have the space and everything, that's great. The thing um, that I realized, though, is the uh, acoustics. I think mm -hmm. we have, we're a little challenged with it in that I think people on the Zoom had a harder time hearing people in the room. So we have to, right. we have to be careful how we do it. Mm -hmm. or, you know, take a little more pain. Yep. Great. Um, and that's honestly just in that regard, please use the microphones because that's the feedback that I got is yes. when somebody was using the microphone, it was much easier to hear on Zoom than when somebody wasn't. And Jared, I don't know what happened to yours. We're going to have to put you in it or something. So. Uh, I think, yeah, I think there's a conspiracy going on. Exactly. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, um, but I think definitely keep reminding us about the microphones because it's so uh, easy to forget and I don't want people to not be able to hear us. So we, sh we all have to remind each other if we see it. Yep, yep. Um, our MS4 annual report, this is obviously every year. Chris Jensen is our MS4 coordinator that's attached to the agenda. If you want to read tons and tons and tons of information about stormwater, feel free. It'll help put you to sleep at night. Um, but uh, the, that whole report is attached and we need to submit that to the DEC. Um, this uh, next resolution, 158, the Lakeside Estates Drainage District was established back in, I think it was actually 19, or I'm sorry, 2002. Um, the Lakeside Estates Drainage District, when it was established in 2002, called out that basically all the stormwater management facilities in that uh, housing development would be included in that district and the residents would be responsible for the cost of that. The developer has recently sold the remaining portion of the land in that development um, to one individual who uh, bought it for construction of one single family private home. Um, there is one final stormwater pond that has not been accepted. This would accept, actually this would uh, declare our intent to accept it. Uh, there's still a few things that need to be done before we officially accept <clears throat> Um, everything associated with all the improvements that need to be accepted in that uh, development. The stormwater pond itself would be owned by the Homeowners Association of Lakeside Estates, but we would have easements. Uh, we do have easements actually already. The planning board's already provided all that stuff for us um, to get access to that. And then that drainage district in particular would be responsible for any costs associated with the clean out of that. Um, the pond was clean out. It's being surveyed and everything before it's being all turned over before we would accept dedication. So there wouldn't be any cleanup or maintenance of that pond, essentially, uh, that last storm management, management facility for the next 20 years. So. And so do they have, are they set up as a um, special district already? Yes, okay. that was done in 2000. I thought they were, but I just, I wanted to ask rather than yep. ask. Yep. Um, Thank you. All right, uh, that's that one. Uh, this next resolution, 159. So this relates to the inclusive playground. Sam, I'm talking a lot. You wanna talk a little bit about kind of, we had a meeting about the inclusive playground and, uh, and basically um, that's all set to move forward, uh, but we actually need the engineering so our guys can go out and do some of the subsurface work. Uh, we actually need an engineered set of plans that include how much you know, where the GIS components go, the GPS components go, so we know, because that's what our dozer uses and everything else, uh, how much 
earth movement has to be done. The fields are our responsibility. You know, we've been putting fill out there, but this will get started on that. How much the base needs to go in the, uh, the actual playground and, and all those sorts of things. So um, the good news is we had budgeted in 2020, Sam, I want to say $230,000 approximately for the playground. Uh, for everything relating to Out House West, is that I think that's about the number. Yeah. Well, when and, we when we budgeted, I think it was ahead of the playground, and we were budgeting more for the fields, weren't we? Because the playground is relatively new. No, it was all part of. Out oh, House. it was all okay. Yep, it was the whole thing. Um, that we've never touched that two hundred and thirty thousand dollars or whatever it is is still sitting there. We've never touched that. That comes from the parks fund. Uh, we have had, I know, one contribution directly to us for the playground. I think it was $5,000 or something or other like that, uh, that went into our park fund essentially associated to, to help with this. But um, Sam, why don't you just give them an update based on that, uh, that call that we had kind of where things are with the playground and stuff. Yeah, um, I think they're still moving forward with um, getting donations. I think they're, do you remember the exact number that they were at? I think he was, uh, it was over, I think, a half a million, approaching 600000 and the yeah. cost of the project is down to 700000 with additional donations, so they're almost there. So. Yeah, they had, like, donations for, um, not for the work and stuff, too, and then I think the they're shooting now for next year, obviously, with all the COVID stuff, so. They would like to, I think, cut the ribbon next year. Yeah. Yeah. So the construction would, um, what they've said is they would like to do a groundbreaking this fall uh, with us, uh, get so that we can get the sub work done essentially uh, if the weather permits as we approach fall, winter over the uh, winter months, um, so that early spring the playground people can come in and actually install the playground and hopefully cut uh, the ribbon on it in the spring, some early summer anyway. So they're very optimistic, aren't they, Sam? Yeah, <laughs> well, hopefully, but we'll see. <laughs> so this specific resolution, MRB has put together a proposal. We, we have to have something to go by. Um, I, I did tell them, I did try to get them to donate this engineering work yeah. for the ground. Uh, you'll see actually in the proposal they donated five thousand um, dollars out of forty five thousand. So they donated this, five thousand dollars. Do we think this is a good price for this work? It's actually a lot of work because it's it's all of the utilities, it's all of the base, it's you know, and honestly, for another engineering firm to come in without the knowledge of MRB, and it's, I know you guys have heard this before, but then the other engineering firm's gonna have to find where the water line is, and my guess is it would be even more, because they're gonna have to find where the utilities already are, where the lines already are, and all that stuff that MRB already has all the CAD stuff on that, because they're our water engineer. So, so this is, uh, that includes the engineering for essentially the water, the sewer, the natural gas, the uh, electric, um, where the connection points are, the base for the actual playground, the details associated with that, as well as the fields, the parking, all of that kind of stuff. So, right. yeah, it's, um, I know it, the number was actually a little bigger, honestly, than what I thought it was going to be. Me um, too. But when I sat down with Greg Hoteling and actually looked at kind of what it really entailed, it was like, all right, like, I guess I get it, so. Um, and then Linda's favorite thing. Sureties, yay. Um, and then there are three executive session requests. Hey Doug, I think on that park um, thing, there's another piece to mention as well. And that um, the line that we're uh, using to pay for that is the 7110201, which comes directly from the park revenue that we collect based on um, the planning and zoning applications. And so again, similar to the reserves, that money is restricted in what it can be used for. And, um, and personally, I think this is a great reason to use it 
um, to build a new park. And um, so just uh, something to keep in mind that, that the funding for this is coming from that separate um, that separate fund, the CM fund, yep. versus the, the general fund and levying a tax to pay for it. And, well, Kate, and I'm just, I mean, I, I agree. I love the fact that we're going to have more fields and everything. And my thing is that we always just squeeze so that we get the best value for the money we spend. And I don't worry about where it comes from as much as I worry about are we making sure we spend as little as we can? You know, Absolutely, so. not to spend frivolously, but yeah. also that the purpose of this fund is for new development of parks, yep. not coming from increasing our tax allowance. Yes. So I fully support that park. Yeah. So, and but you know, Kate brings up a good point, and I know we've talked about it before. This proposed development, I go back to this earlier resolution, is proposing 66 units. That's $66,000 to go into the parks fund while, okay, look, look at, look, great example here. This entire development, all it does is pay for the engineering essentially in a little bit for this inclusive playground. Now, obviously we don't normally spend a million dollars on a playground or thereabouts. This is a very unique situation, but I do still think we need to go back when we look, talk about fees at some point in time and have a conversation about that park and rec fee. It's currently a thousand dollars. That is a decision on the town board. There's other communities, I think we've found that Victor is charging $5,000 per unit. Um, you know, that's a source of revenue to help our parks. While it can't be used for quote unquote maintenance, some of the improvements that we do at our parks, that money can be used for. So um, at some point, I think we need to still go back and revisit that. Yeah, good point. And I think, you know, we, we do have ideas for parks that, um, you know, be really great to be able to bring to the residents. Right, exactly. All right, so we're down towards the end and finished up on that. Yep, that's, that's, that concludes the tour of the agenda. So. All right, well, thank All you right. for the tour. Um, <laughs> anybody have anything else that they wanted to bring up? How are we feeling about the budget uh, work? So uh, the, the 2021 budget, um, so the, generally, let me say the 2020 budget, I think we're actually in really good shape Yeah. For right now. Let's see how the rest of the year goes with the COVID situation. Hopefully we don't end up with another shutdown and a huge loss in sales tax, but reading the tea leaves of the comptroller's office and some of the other things, you know, the comptroller, I sent you out that email about the comptroller was doing this analysis month by month. I think we're pretty good shape. I think we're pretty well spot on. We may be a little bit, um, hopefully we'll have a little bit more sales tax revenue coming in than what we are thinking that we're gonna have, which would be a great thing. Um, but um, I think we're in relatively good shape for this year. For 2021, we're beginning the process now. We have what's called a projection scenario management in our new system. The department heads now have access to that and they're starting to work on their proposals. Um, we have meetings with department heads in another two weeks, I think it is here or so. Uh, where we'll start going through and putting their things together. But I think generally speaking, um, everybody, all the department heads are aware that this is a very unusual situation. Um, everybody is doing their absolute best to try to figure out ways to not spend money. Um, you know, we, we have the, um, the, um, the procurement policy that says $1,000 or more, in, in, you know, requires a purchase order to have some control on that, which has been fine. And, and originally we said, hey, we may have to go back and look at that during the situation. But what I can tell you is, and, and Sam, I know, and Kate both get this too, but I have department heads and I have employees saying, hey, I really need this, but it's gonna cost $120 and that's the cheapest I can find. I'm like, oh, good God, just go get it, whatever, you know? So it's great that our staff is so- uh, Good happy pinchers. Yes, yes. So um, I think as we go into the 2021 budget, everybody has that mindset. I think one of the biggest concerns uh, other than the water project is highway. And I've been having many conversations with Jim. You know, we really cut the highway budget a lot this year and trying to figure out, okay, what are, what are we going to be able to do to get the maximum benefit possible as we move forward with highway and specifically some of the highway work that needs to be done. And you know, I think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of have a unofficial budget proposal in terms of, hey, here's some of the things that we know that need to be done, but we know we can't afford to do these right now. So this is what we're recommending, but please be aware there's this list of things that need to be done at additional expenses that at some point we got to go back and figure out how to deal with. So. 
And are we are we getting any sense from uh, the funding sources that any of the other ones are in jeopardy, or is everything still looking like a go? I know there were things that we were. Have we heard anything about the WIA grant? You know, there's a lot of uncertainty about is this money from the state really going to come to us? And that's that's still a question. So the WIA grant, you know, the EFC money uh, basically is the WIA money, and and what we're being told is uh, the the analogy is the spigot is closed right now. But that doesn't mean that the money's not going to come. It's just we're not going to get it right now, which is why we actually had to go ahead and do. We have a band, hey, by the way, we should mention a million and a half dollars is being sold today, a bond anticipation note. Um, we have some cash flow for Canada Agri Consolidated for this project. As we move forward, and you actually will see in my report, I think I notated it, um, in the coming months, we have a um, a workflow projection for this project that we're keeping up with. So we know that, for instance, in the month of um, August, we've got about uh, $600,000 in expenses, September 595, uh, October, it looks like it's 592, November is uh, 593. So without having that $3 million WIA money that we originally were expecting to be able to draw down on, we're having to do these bond anticipation notes a little bit earlier than what we had originally projected so that we have the cash flow to be able to pay these bills as they come in. So I think that's probably the biggest challenge or the biggest difference is, you know, originally like we were gonna do a million, we're doing a million and a half right now. We're probably gonna have to do another million and a half, probably November, October, November timeframe. Um, and then the EFC money will come on the back end of it instead of upfront like we were originally expecting. Um, but everything that we're hearing is that it's still going to come. It's just a matter of when, but it's the same for not only that, um, Peter Inglesby in Farmington tells me the same exact thing. They're having trouble. They haven't been able to get their VLT money. And, and basically all that state money, it's not that it's going away. It's just the check is not in the mail yet. And, and that's the question is when that check is going to be put in the mail for all of that. Same for our other grants too from the state. So Doug, since, since, um, since I've been involved anyway, we've always had a lot of cash. So cash flow management never really was so much of a concern. Are we getting to the point where cash flow management is more of a concern for us? Kate and I talk about it quite often, don't we, Kate? And I'm like, okay, how much cash is in this? How much cash is in that? And yes, uh, that's something I feel like, especially bringing Kate on board with her being here full time. Um, ever since that, I think Kate and I have had that question and, and those conversations, but we've probably never talked about it with you guys before. Now it's like, oh, wait, we got to go ahead and do it this band so that we have the cash right. so that we've got the money. Now, with that said, we, we have cash. We've got money. We just moved $2 million over to NY class. We've got cash. We have access to cash. Okay. Specifically, you know, like Canada Agri Consolidated Water District. That's going to be getting light on cash with these big expenses coming in in the next couple of months that we know we're going to have. So let me ask a question then. In the short term, is it smarter to borrow some of our own cash from the money that's sitting with the investments making under 1%, I'm guessing, I'm not sure where we are with that, that percentages, but the percentages are through the floor and have, instead of, you know, maybe delay the bond a little and pay ourselves some interest from Candigua Consolidated, is that a possibility? Um, so I'm sorry, I'm getting multiple messages for the LDC meeting at 10 o'clock. Um, so we have to be careful with that, Linda, because um, there, there are a couple things. So we over, I'm just looking ahead, by December 31st, it looks like to me our total cost for the water project by December 31st, 2020, again, this is a projection, but we'll be in just over $4 million. We don't really have the cash to be able yeah, to- Yeah, no, I'm not anticipating we could do all of it. I'm saying, is there some point where we'd want to make some interest that we would pay to someone else uh, and delay it a little bit? And not to say that we could ever forego it. I think, you know, we like you say, we don't have that much money. Right. Um, but we have the $2 million, essentially the uh, $2 million that we just moved over to NY class. Uh, we, have our, we have our own policies that, that we could certainly go back and revisit in terms of how much we keep on hand. Um, yeah, keep it in mind. Have some conversations about uh, yep. as we move forward, yeah. 
Um, and then we'd have to, the only thing I'm not sure is how we, we'd have to book a do to do five right. because it's a special district. So there, it gets a little quirky because all the residents of the town of Canada would don't pay into Canada. Exactly. No, it would have to be done through the specific yeah. funds. Right. Um, but I was just thinking if we're paying interest, paying it to ourselves is better than getting a low rate. Yep. But it isn't something we could do for the full project because I understand we don't have that much money sitting around. Right, exactly. But it's a great question. It's a great question. It's something we can look at as we um, move Yeah, we, you know what? If it, it, just keep it in mind. And if it, come, if it looks like it's something we can do, put off for a month or two the, a ban because mm -hmm. we can you know, fund a little ourselves and then get it back when we get the ban. Yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. I'm just taking a look here at the water project and to date, um, we've already floated 836,000 out of SW500 for this project. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think we've, we've already been moving in that direction of saving ourselves, whereas we may have needed to do something a lot sooner. If but that SW500. came from the, that came from Candigua Consolidated itself, Correct. right? So, right. Yeah. So we don't have to pay ourselves interest on that because that's yeah. our own money yep. in the, in the district, but yep. yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. Yep, yep, yep. Any other things that we need to talk about? Mm, just uh, the only other thing, um, we did not have a finance meeting last week. And um, right. we had, um, I'm sorry, just grabbing my budget calendar. Um, we originally on the budget calendar, I had earmarked um, just employee compensation. I just want to touch base on that. Um, you know, we've, we've, We've made a change recently with the health insurance where the employees pay the gold plan, you know, if they want to keep that. Um, I think, Sam, has everybody switched off of that? I think there may have been one or two that decided opted to keep it and pay. No, actually, um, I think there's still four on the gold plan, even with the um, increase in the premium. Okay. All right. And then... Um, Employee compensation for next year, you know, what I had a conversation with the department heads about is the general, the 2% cost of living adjustment. Uh, we'll just kind of see how the numbers shake out in terms of that. And then um, in terms of, uh, you know, special projects or anything at all like that, we're just trying to be very cautious, obviously, not knowing where things are going to be. Um, in the projection, when we adopted the COVID budget, I think that we had budgeted or kind of looking ahead projected possible loss of 25% of sales tax for next year for 2021. So that's kind of the number that I'm still like dancing around trying to just again, being conservative and hopefully the numbers will come in higher than that. And we'll right. get a better idea uh, by the time we're done second quarter. And really by the time we adopt the budget, we'll be into, uh, we should have the numbers for the third quarter, hopefully. And we'll have a much better idea of where things play out. And then we'll have a little bit more history to work off of. The thing that I feel like with the, um, with the extra stimulus that has been out floating around, it's helped keep the sales tax numbers better than they would be because people were getting extra money sometimes when they were laid off. If that money comes to an end, um, we could see what we anticipated in Q2 kind of shift over to Q3 where there's a contraction in people's free cash flow. And so they can't do their home repairs. I mean, I think that's been a big boost for the sales tax, but right. anyway, that's my theory on it. Yep. So, okay. All right. I'm good if everyone else is. Yep. yep. I'm fine. All right. See everybody Monday night. Have a great day, right. guys. See ya. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.